Hi, it's Kit with SVJader. Today, we will learn how to create a simple animation with SVJader. To get started, go to the Import SVG button. I've already created a few samples for the purpose of this tutorial, and I'm going to start with the SVG folder. Select and open. The project is created. We can see the project loaded here, and I'm going to click Open. The SVG loads into the stage, and the canvas size is 300 by 300 pixels. You can change that by going into the Document Properties, which is named Layer 1 for this instance. Its properties will appear at the right side of the screen. You can change the size and position and the duration of the timeline. The default is 3 seconds and the darker gray of the timeline ruler indicates the duration of the animation, which is 3 seconds, right to this point. I'm going to increase the duration up to 5 seconds, for now. And I'm going to leave the size of the canvas at 300 by 300. Here are the two elements creating our SVG. Folder front and folder back. Every SVG that loads onto the stage will come with the origin point set by default to the top left corner of the canvas, which should be here. To see the origin point, we have to select the Transform tool from here, and we can see the origin for this selected element, and also for the other element that we can select directly from the stage. You can drag and reposition the origin of every element or you can automatically center it by clicking on this button to center the origin. The animators available are here on this button. You can see we have Morph, Change Position, Fill Color, Fill Opacity. To animate the whole folder here, we have to create a group. Select one of the elements and hold down Command or Control. If you're using Windows, it's Control, and for Mac OS, it's Command. To multi-select, then right-click and select Group, or you can use the shortcut Command-G or Control-G. And we've made a group. The origin for the group is also set as default in the top left corner of the canvas. Let's center it and let's rename the group by double clicking the name and let's call it Folder. To start animating, select the folder and go back to the animators. Now, you may notice that there are fewer animators to choose from for groups. Animators like Morph, for example, can't be added to a group element. That's okay here though. Let's start with Scale. This will add the folder and the scale animator to the timeline, and it will add the first keyframe at the position of the playhead. Let's scale down the folder, and for that, make sure you have the Transform tool selected, which is responsible for all the properties here in this Transform panel. And by dragging it, Hold Shift before clicking and continue to hold Shift down while dragging to scale the folder. To set more precise values, you can use the inputs from each animator, in this case from Scale. For Scale, I want to scale it down to 0.5. This will mean 50%. 0.5 again, that's your 50% again. And we scale down the folder. Let's drag the playhead to half a second here and scale it up a little. Let's go 90%. That will mean 0 0.9. 0 0.9. And the second keyframe will be added in the timeline. Let's jump back to 0 and press play to see the animation so far. To add more elements into your project, you can use the library, which you can open from this button over here. 
and you can upload new items from your computer or you can use some of the elements already made. Basic shapes, avatars, business icons, devices, and so on. For this example, I'm going back to my upload section. I'm going to click on Upload New. I'm going to choose another icon, let's say the pencil icon, and click Open. It loads into my upload section and click on it to add it to the stage. As I've said before, we have to center the origin. We can open the group to see what's going on in here. We have the pencil group and the rectangle, which is in the back. Let's close the group. What I want to do now is make the pencil icon come up from within the folder. But for now, we have it above the folder. What we're going to do is select the group. And we can use these arrows to rearrange it in the element list. Or we can drag it. If we drag it in this direction above the name of the elements, it will include it in the folder. But if you go to the left and drag it above these dotted lines, it will place it down and then you can rearrange it. And we've sent it back. As you can see, it's all the way behind the folder. But what we want is to place it between the front part of the folder and the back part of the folder. And for that, I'm going to click and hold and drag it up in the folder. And let's place it right between folder front and folder back. And now we have it here. Let's place it right here to hide it behind the folder front element. And right about here, let's drag the folder to here before it completes its scaling. I want to make this icon pop out of this folder. And for that, I'm going to choose the Position Animator. The first keyframe will be set at the position of the playhead. I'm going to drag it to one second, or maybe a little more, and drag it to pop out here. You can see this dashed line that will indicate the path of the position. Let's play it once through to see it, and it will happen just like this. Just jump back to zero, and we can bend this path to curve it a little and adjust it to make the position movement a little more dynamic. Now, let's see. And now it will follow the path we just created. We can make it look like an S trajectory, or we can simply leave it like this. Let's also add a little rotation to this icon that's popping out. For that, let's place the playhead where we want the rotation to start. With the pencil icon selected, open the animation list and add Rotate. Now for the first keyframe, we have to rotate it a little. And for that, we can choose this input. If we type in 360 degrees, that will mean one turn. And right here, for the second keyframe we want to place, let's put it back to zero. That means it will rotate 360 degrees while it's moving on this path direction. Let's check our animation, and it will look exactly like this. You can preview your animation by clicking on this button here for a preview.
Before previewing, you can choose a bunch of options here. The animation can start on load or on mouse over. That means the animation will start whenever you roll over the SVG with your mouse or on click. Let's choose on click for this instance. We can leave it on JavaScript. JavaScript will support more advanced animations. You can choose between JavaScript or CSS. The difference is that CSS doesn't support all animators, whereas JavaScript does. So JavaScript will allow you to use more advanced techniques on your animation. Let's click OK and let's preview it again. Ah, the animation doesn't start because I set it to be on on click. Let's roll over it and click and the animation begins. Let's save our progress so far by clicking Save. And let's check it into My Project section. The animation is saved here. To organize your projects, you can create labels. I already have a label here for those two projects, but you can add a new label. Let's call it Icons. And pick a color for it. I like green for this one, and click Save. We can go back to All Projects, click on this button, and Edit to edit the folder project. You can rename it here or assign it to a label. And now I'm going to click on Icons, the label we just created, and click Save. And now we can have more organized projects by using the Icons label or the Samples label. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.